here. Before we get started with this video, I just wanted to put a little bit of a disclaimer out there. I filmed this video almost a year ago, and if I knew now what I knew then, I would have done a lot of things differently. I did make mistakes. I'm not afraid to say that. This is my very first piece of furniture that I'd ever given a makeover to, and even though it's not perfect, I do still love it, and I'm very proud of it. I bought this desk for $10 at a garage sale, and somebody was just going to throw it away. This is a desk. I am using it for a makeup vanity since it has great storage, and it really comes in handy. When I filmed this, I originally just filmed it for myself. I never really had a lot of intentions of posting it so there are a lot of clips that I missed and I should have filmed but I will try and do my best to explain everything throughout the video since the majority of the video will be voiceover I will try and mention as much as I can if you have any questions please feel free to leave me a comment there are a lot of ways to flip furniture and you can do it however you want this is your piece of furniture this is your brain this is your masterpiece it's it's a work of art and whatever you feel looks best i feel like you should do it all in all i hope you learned some tips and tricks i hope you enjoy thank you again so much for watching and we'll see you at the end of the video stay tuned to the end of the video as i do have a blooper i find it absolutely hilarious you never really know what you're gonna get when you buy a piece of used furniture you never really know what's lurking around <laughs> thanks again so much for watching and please enjoy all right, so just to get started, I am taking a Clorox wipe and I'm wiping down my desk. It was very, very dirty when I bought it. There was a lot of dirt and gunk and just build up all over it. I truly feel like it was sitting in someone's side yard for months, if not years. If you are planning on sanding your project, I feel a Clorox wipe would be fine, but if you are not, I would suggest just using a rag and water. I'm not quite sure how the chemicals will react with any paint or primer, but like I said, since I was standing, I did just decide it was more convenient for me just to use a Clorox wipe. If you would like, you can use sandpaper to sand down a project like this, but since I had the convenience of an electrical hand sander, I just did decide to go with that since it made it easier for me. You are going to see that these clips are pretty short since it can be pretty repetitive, but pretty much when you are standing, you just want to go with the grain of the wood on whatever project piece you are doing. If I look pretty awkward with this in my hand, it's because I was pretty awkward. It feels a little funny at first, it takes a little while to get the hang of it, but it's a lot faster in my opinion, it's a lot more efficient, so if you do have an ac access to one, I do suggest using it. So here I am just sanding the side of my desk. I am, for the most part, pretty much going with the grain of the wood. Um, you will kind of see me at one point pick up the sander and move it to the left, and I promise I'm not standing from side to side, I was just moving it. Okay, so this is where pretty much all of my mistakes begin. Just like sanding, when you are spraying, you want to go with the grain of the wood. So in my case, it would be up and down, not side to side like I'm doing right now. Um, and you also want to be a good distance away from the piece. You don't want the paint to run and drip, which you will see in a second. I did make a couple mistakes like that. Okay, so here comes the runny, drippy paint. Like you can see here, I am still way too close to the desk to be spraying. I should have taken a couple steps back and then sprayed from there. Oh, and there it is. There is the runny paint. I was way, way, way too close. I should have taken shorter strokes when spray painting this. I also was at the bottom of the can, so I know I was getting pretty, pretty antsy to finish it and just move on to the next one. So that's why I did kind of rush this part and you can see the drips running down the side. Okay, so now I'm going to be taking the handles off. Just get a screwdriver that fits the screws on the back of the handle and just unscrew them. These did come with washers on them. Not all projects will have washers on them, but just keep them off to the side. You are going to need them to put the handles back on at the end of the project. Most pieces of furniture, the handle would just fall off, but for some reason, my handles would not come off. You're going to see me struggle to try and get this thing off. It will not come off to save my life. It took me forever 
to get this off. Pretty much, I thought they sat there and glued it to the drawer, and I wasn't sure at that point how I was going to get these off. I finally just decided, okay, I'm done pulling. I'm done trying to get this thing off. I'm just going to resort to grabbing the screwdriver and knocking it off. I'm sorry I don't have a better clip of this, but I am just spray painting my drawer poles with gold spray paint. And then I'm going to be moving on to sanding my drawer fronts. This part goes pretty fast since there wasn't a lot, but that was it. <laughs> so now I'm just removing the drawer liner that was in the drawers when I got it. Um, this drawer, drawer liner was a little old, but it did come off very nicely, which I was very happy with. So right here, I am just spraying my pink spray paint as a base coat for what I will be doing next for the front of my drawers. I did decide to spray the inside of my drawers pink as well since I wanted the sides and the insides of my drawers painted. So this is just a clip showing you all of the drawers have been painted pink on the inside walls. And yes, you will see drippy paint here too since I was spraying way too close as well. Since I will be doing a striped design on the side of my drawers, I am just spraying each side with the white spray paint to start. If you're going to do a striped design with two different colors, start with the lightest shade first on the bottom. I would also recommend doing a primer coat first since this does soak up quite a bit of paint. So now that the white paint that I sprayed on the side of the drawers has dried, I'm going to start taping off for my stripe pattern. You will just see that I'm using blue painter's tape that I got from Home Depot. It's a pretty easy process once you get the hang of it, but it can be pretty tedious since you have to do two sides each drawer. And in my case, I had six drawers, so I had to do this 12 times. Just a little tip for this, when you're pressing down your tape, make sure that you press it down completely. When you go to spray your next color, you don't want any paint getting underneath any tape bubbles. And right here, what I am doing is I'm just taking a second piece of tape to evenly space out my stripes. Here is just an overview shot of what the drawer looks like with all the tape on it ready for the next coat of paint. I am now just taking my black spray paint and I am spraying the non-taped area. This is to create the black and white stripe on the side of the drawer.
Once that is done, it is now time to take the tape off. As you can see on the second drawer, I did not press my tape down all the way, so I did have some black paint bleed onto the white. Now, if you don't like that, you can go back in with acrylic paint or any other kind of white paint and just touch up the edges to clean them up. Once those are done, now you have to flip them over and repeat the same steps on the other side of the drawers. So I wasn't planning on doing this step in the beginning, but as time progressed, I just couldn't stay on the front of my drawers. So I picked up some spackle at my local Home Depot store and I filled in the divots in the front of each of my drawers. What you'll see here is I am filling in each little divot with the spackle and I'm evenly distributing it throughout the space. Let me just say it's really hard to fill in spackle and film it with your other hand at the same time. So I apologize if the camera is shaky and all over the place. And yes, that is black paint that did bleed through the tape since I apparently didn't press it down all the way. So here I am just adding more spackle to the spots that needed more and then I'll be scraping it to make it an even coat. Once the spackle set and dried, my dad showed me how to sand it off. Basically, you just need to create a nice flat surface with a sanding sponge or any sandpaper. I would recommend using anywhere from an 80 grit to 120 grit sandpaper just to evenly smooth out the spackle. You don't want to remove it com completely, you just want to create a nice even base. So my dad is just showing me how to do my next layer of speckle. He is just taping off around the speckle area just so it doesn't get so much on the surface of the drawer front. We are just taking our blue painter's tape and taping off the area around the speckling strip. And he'll be just taking speckle on our little scraper tool and evenly distributing it again over that first layer of speckle. The reason for doing a second coat of speckle is because the first layer will shrink and you will need to fill in those gaps with the second layer just to make it flush with the surface. Once that step is done, just take the painter's tape off and just let it dry again. So I will be glittering the fronts of my drawers. I forgot to film the step where I spray painted over the spackle and made it pink again. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking my first coat of Mod Podge and evenly distributing it throughout the front of the drawer. Don't be afraid to be generous with the Mod Podge, but just be mindful that you don't want it too gloppy or too thick. And also make sure that you don't have any spillage over the side since it will create a problem down the road. I apologize for the upcoming clip as I thought I had a longer one, but what you will just be seeing very quickly is me just pouring on my first layer of glitter. You'll see the exact same step repeated on my second layer once my first layer has dried. So now here, my first layer of glitter and Mod Podge has dried, so I'm going back in with more Mod Podge and evenly distributing it throughout all the drawer fronts as well, since I'm going to be doing a second coat of glitter. The same steps and process that I'm doing right now is identical to what I did for the first round before it dried. This step can be pretty tedious and pretty repetitive since you have to do it twice for each drawer. So in my case, since I had six drawers, I'll be doing this 12 times. And there's a lot of different ways that you can go about Mod Podging glitter onto the front, but this is just what I found works best for me. So if you have another way or another technique that you find works better, then definitely do it or definitely try out something different. You never really know what's going to work best, but this is just what I found works and 
It still is holding up to this day. Another big tip when working with glitter, if you already have a glitter color and you go to pick up another package of it from the store, make sure that you mix the glitter together. I made that mistake and I was using the remainder of one bottle that I'd had for a while and I went and replaced it with another bottle. And what ended up happening is that my pink colors that were called the same thing were actually not the same color. So I have a couple drawers that are one color pink and then the other drawers that are another shade pink. So just if you are going to be re reusing old glitter, just make sure to mix it with the new stuff to make them all match and all the same. So what I'm doing here is I'm just evenly distributing the glitter over the Mod Podge and once I get a good layer on it, I will turn it over and shake it off. And yes, this is very messy and very overwhelming with glitter going everywhere. You are going to be wasting some glitter from the extra fallout, so I just suggest buying a couple bottles of the glitter. Make sure to fill in any of the extra areas with the glitter that you have remaining and left over and just do the same process over and over again just to make sure you have an even coat. After that is done and before it is dry, just go in with a toothpick and just make sure that you get the Mod Podge out of the drawer pull hole. You don't want to have to screw through it later on. Before I put the handles back on, I forgot to film the step where I took my Mod Podge sealant spray and sealed the front of the glitter drawers so I don't have glitter all over my room or all over my hands every time I touch it. After your sealant dries, you're going to be taking your screws and washers and drawer pulls and reattaching them to the front of your drawers. Now I am taking my screwdriver and I'm just going to be tightening the screws on the back of my drawer pulls. This next step is optional, but I've had this drawer liner paper forever, and I just thought that the black and white pattern went so well with the black and white stripes. In this, you're going to see my mom helping me since this is kind of a, a difficult task. I just measured the inside of my drawers, and then I cut out my liner paper to match the dimensions correctly. Definitely take your time on this step since it can be pretty hard and you might not always have enough paper to fit the whole drawer. So little by little stick the paper down to the bottom of the drawer and just kind of pull up the bottom piece of the paper and just quickly adhere it to the bottom. You can take something that is flat like a credit card and just kind of push out all the air bubbles. It was very difficult trying to find a credit card that did not have any numbers or any information on it. So once you make sure that all your corners have been pushed down, that is basically it. It is now time to enjoy your beautiful new piece of furniture. As you will see, the right side of my drawers do not match as far as the glitter goes. That's because I did not mix my glitter and make sure that they were the exact same color. Even though it's not perfect, I still love it. This was my very first piece of furniture and I'm still so proud of how it turned out, even with all of its flaws. Really cute pillow and it's kind of a burlapy, canvasy look with gold bows on it. Like I said, I am redoing my bedding. So it's gonna be more of a gold, gold and white focus. But I think even though this is cream and it is canvas, it'll still look cute with the white, um, which I just thought it was adorable. Oh god. Oh god. Whew. I just almost died. 